1.2, we get to do a little bit of applications. Since this is a business-centered course, we do have some business applications. So we're gonna take a look at uh, revenue costs, profit functions, uh, and it looks like a little bit of compound interest as well. So find the final amount of money in an account if 2,700 is deposited at 5.5% compounded quarterly, right, every three months, and the money is left for five years. <sighs> okay, can I remember the formula? So the future value of money, if we're compounding, uh, if we have compound interest, should be the principal amount times one plus the periodic interest rate, which is the rate over some kind of time component, if I remember correctly. And then we need to raise that to the number of compounds. So the number of compounds should be uh, T times F, right? Oh, no, this, this should be frequency. Sorry, this should be R over F. So we take the rate given to us, divide by the frequency. That's the what we call the periodic interest rate. And then the number of compounds is the time that we have our money invested in times the frequency number. So this should be fine. This should look good. So find the final amount. So we're going to deposit $2,700. We have a 5.5% interest rate, so 0 0.055. We're going to have that compound quarterly. So the frequency is four. We're gonna put that money in for five years. T needs to be entered as a yearly kind of thing. So five times four, so there should be 20 compounds altogether over the course of five years, right? So if it's happening every month. So I'm just gonna rewrite this as 20. So one plus, what do we need? 0 0.055, let's fraction that with four here. So boom, and we need two, the power of 20. So we're gonna have about 3,547. So 3,500. $47 and 98 cents. And be a little careful here. It does say round to two decimal places. The dollar sign is also here. So when I go to enter this, if I if I were entering this as a student, I would want to make sure to go 3547.98. And I wouldn't add any more or any less, and that should be okay. What present value amounts to a certain amount of money if it's invested for two years at 11% compounded monthly? So again, we should be able to use our future value formula. So one plus R over F, T, F. And let's see what's given to us. So this is actually now gonna be our future value. So this question is asking us, how much do I have to put into the bank now to get this amount in the future? So let's put our 12,000. $448.29 as a future value, and our goal is oh, yeah? to try to find... Prepare to be iterated! The Yarbs! Hey, thanks so much for the follow. Much appreciated. How are you doing? So what do we have here? 1 plus the rate. So 11% compounded monthly. So my frequency number is 12, and we're putting this in for two years. So we need 2 times 12 for T times F. So I'm going to write that as 24 and then we should be good to uh, go ahead and try to find P. So P is going to be this 12,448.29. And we're going to divide that by 1 plus 11% monthly to the power of 24. So let's go ahead and let's set up this fraction. So 12448.29. Uh, and let's pop into the denominator. We do need our brackets to the 24. Uh, I think that did not work. <laughs> I think it just turned into a number 24. Wait, did this actually go into the power? Oh, no, it didn't. Okay. 1 plus 11% compounded monthly 
to the 24. That should do it. And the present value is pretty much $10,000. That's how you know you've done the question right. And they don't always come out that nicely, do they? Uh, so the present value is exactly $10,000. There it is. Oh, check this out. Suppose a calculator manufacturer has the total cost function as this and the total revenue function as this. What is the equation of the profit function? So profit is revenue minus costs. So P of X should be the revenue that I bring in minus the costs to produce the items. If the revenue is 55, let's say $55 times the number of items that I produce, I need to subtract off all of the costs. So I'm going to be a little careful here. I'm going to put brackets in 11, 0, 0, 0. Hello, Ultimate. How are you doing? Feynman's Lebniz rule needed a demented. Yeah, seriously, right? F F uh, Feynman's trick is crazy. But it's, it's, I don't know, I learned that when I was doing my 100 integral stream. It's a cool little technique, but it's really hard to, it's really hard mentally to implement that technique. Okay, let's distribute the minus sign through the brackets. So we need a subtraction of 43x as well as a subtraction of 11,000. And then we just collect our x values. So let's see, we have 55 x's. We're going to take away 43 of them. That should leave us with what, 12? So 12 X's, so we have 12 X's minus 11,000. So 12 X's minus 11,000. And then it's asking, what's the profit on 2,100 units? So P evaluated at 2,100 should be 12 times 2,100 minus 11,000. So let's go ahead, let's pop that into the calculator and we'll subtract off our 11,000. Bada boom, so $14,200 in profit, man. So question four, suppose a stereo receiver manufacturer has the total cost function as this and the total revenue, what's the equation of the profit function? So a similar story here, we're gonna do revenue minus costs. So let's take, I don't think I need to write this one down. We can take our 830 and we'll go ahead and we'll subtract our 400. This is gonna be the coefficient of X. So this is 430 X. And then we need to subtract off our 2490. So that should be our profit function. And then if I want the profit on 390 units, I'm gonna go 430 times the number of units that I make, and then subtract off the, the fixed costs of 2490. Sheesh. 165210, 165210, yikes. That's a lot of money. All right, question five. So Q is the number of items. So we'll, we'll take Q to be the quantity of our items. Um, I also believe here P is probably gonna stand for the price. So Q, we can think about it as quantity. And P, let's think about that as the price. Because we're looking at some supply demand economics here. So we have two equations. We have an, a quadratic equation that represents the demand. And we have a quadratic equation that represents the supply. So we could actually, we could probably plot these and kind of get a sense of what they look like using Desmos. So one of these is 1040.4, 1040.4, very specific, minus oops, 0.4 Q squared, 0.4 Q squared. Oh yeah, I guess we should use y's and x's so Desmos knows what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so it's a downwards facing parabola with a maximum happening at 1040.4. The next equation we have is 0.5q squared. So I'm going to put this in as y equals 0.5x uh, squared. So we can see this parabola uh, opening up. And we can probably, let's see, I could probably make this a little bit better. What are we around here? This is kind of like 100. So I probably only need the x values to be like between negative 100 to positive 100. That's probably fine. There, and that'll give us a pretty good picture of what's happening. So x and y here are representing, x is going to be representing our quantity and y is representing our price. Uh, these things can only be positive. So we really only need to view this for x greater than or equal to 0. And we know from our introduction to economics that where the supply and demand curves meet, that's where we expect the equilibrium uh, price and quantity to happen. So this is um, where everything is kind of like in a nice state of uh, non-movement where our supply and demand uh, are equal. So we expect the X value or the quantity to be our 34 items and we expect the price to settle around $578. So let's see if we can prove that algebraically. So we need supply to equal the demand. Since both have P equals something, I can actually set those two things equivalent to each other right away. So my demand is 1040.4 minus 0.4Q squared. And then my supply is 0.5Q squared. Uh, okay, so we, I guess, need to get all of the Qs together. <laughs> Desmos detail, <laughs> like you're some sort of mathematical mastermind. Don't get too Zeta ahead of yourself. I don't know. I, I you're looking at a Zeta talented reaper, master of mathematics in the game. It's all part of my grand equation. <laughs> oh, a Desmos demon. <laughs> okay, okay, I got you now. I got you. I was like, show says you're not a mathematical mastermind, but I don't know, if you can show me tricks like that in Desmos, I'm pretty sure you're a mathematical mastermind. So I'm going to take this negative 0.4, let's group that together with the 0.5, that's going to give us 0.9, so we have 0.9q squares, should be 1040.4, and then we need to divide both sides by 0.9. So let's take our 1040.4, let's divide by 0.9, and that's going to give us uh, 1,156. That's Q squared. Now I need to apply the square root to that, so let's square root our answer, and we do indeed get 34. Now when I force a square root, usually I take the plus minus. Uh, but in this case, since we want the quantity to be positive, we're going to ignore the negative solution in this particular case uh, because the quantity cannot be negative in this particular applied example. So the equilibrium quantity is 34 items. And then what we can do is we can use basically any one of these equations. Uh, the supply function is pretty straightforward. So if I know I have 34 items for Q, I can take 0.5. I can multiply by 34 squared, and this should give me the equilibrium price that we're looking for, which is $578. Bam! If the demand for a pair of designer high heel shoes is given by blah, and the supply function for the same shoes is given by this, Okay, so the demand, we know the demand function is 4p plus 5q equals 825. So the quantity demanded at $175. So let's put in 175 for the price. And we should be able to solve for Q here, I think. So we need 
25 subtract 4 times 175. So that's 125. So 5q should be equal to 125. How many fives are in there? There's a, like 25 fives in there. So 125 divided by 5, and boom, we get 25. So the demand when this particular item is at $175 is 25 items. So 25 items are needed to satiate the demand in our economy. And I want to do the same thing for the supply. So let me grab the supply function. The supply function is do, 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 uh, P minus 6Q is equal to negative 35. And again, I want to take my 175, put that in for the price. So 175. And we're going to, again, try to solve for Q here. So let's take our negative 35. Oops. Uh, negative 35. We're going to subtract. 175 more, and that's going to give us negative 210. Is negative 210 divisible by 6? It's divisible by 3, and it's even. Cool. Okay, so this is divisible by negative 6. And I just need to swap the sign here. Uh, but this should come out to be positive 35. So Q should be 35 units. Okay, so let's step back. Uh, part C says at 175, we have either a surplus, a shortfall, or equilibrium. Well, it's certainly not equilibrium because the quantity demanded is less than the quantity supplied um, at this particular uh, instance. So we're gonna supply 35 items into the economy, right, or into our kind of scenario, but only 25 are gonna be picked up at 175. So we're actually gonna have a surplus of stuff, aren't we? Right? There's going to be like 10 extra items that are kind of sitting here in our particular market. Um, so we're going to have more items than what the demand looks like. So if the quantity supplied is higher, we end up in a surplus. If the quantity supplied is lower than the quantity demanded, we end up in a shortfall, meaning there's not enough being supplied into the market uh, to meet the demand that the market has at this particular price. And of course, if uh, the demand and supply are equivalent to each other, then we should be at equilibrium um, at this particular dollar value.